was done There were no rules We were so young Our friends were born So many songs Yet to be sung So many roads Still unexplored We gave the ways to dream somehow we'll find new ways to dream TJ was probably one of the most wonderful children you could ever want to meet not because he was my child but there was something extremely special about him more than once, people have said to me, that kid's been here before. He was wise beyond his years. He was so full of life and energy and so accepting of his sometimes painful handicaps and physical shortcomings. You wouldn't think that you could learn from a seven-year-old, but I started learning from TJ the moment he was born. He accepted his illness and took every drop of happiness and love out of the time that he had. Even if I had it to do over, knowing that I would lose him, I wouldn't change it because his short life was very meaningful to everyone who crossed his path. This wonderful little man gave and received more love in his seven years than most experienced in a lifetime. My name is Elizabeth and I'm proud to say TJ was my son. Originally from Charlotte, after graduating from Furman University, Michael went to New York pursuing a career in modeling. Moving to Atlanta in the late 70s, he began his business interests. Michael's ability to organize fabulous soirees was unparalleled in the city. The Christmas party at the Academy of Medicine has yet to be matched. Michael's greatest love was always his friends and family. Generous to a fault, Michael was always available for whoever was in need in whatever manner was necessary. If you were without financial support, without health insurance, and had nowhere else to turn, Michael was always willing to share his extensive knowledge and his contacts. Michael is greatly missed. No more wars to fight. White flags fly tonight. You are out of danger now. Battlefield is still. While poppies on the hill, peace can only come when you surrender. Hear the tracers fly, lighting up the sky. But I'll fight on to the end. Let them send their armies. I won't see you now till I surrender. I'll see you again when I surrender. Toy was born May 22, 1992. She was born premature. She was so tiny she looked like a baby doll. That's why we named her Toy. The first time I looked at Toy, I knew she was special. All through Toy's 18 months of life, there was many trips to the hospital. But no matter what she went through, she would always give you her million dollar smile. She loved her brother Dustin with all her heart. She had seven nannies and papas that she loved very much. Our love for Toy will be never ending. We miss her, but even though she is not with us, she remains in our hearts. Toy will always be mom and daddy's little angel. My name is Stephanie Allen, and Toy was my daughter. Bruce always won at bingo. Bruce cried at the movies. Bruce made me feel like a star. Bruce loved to party. Bruce knew how to sling some cocktails. Bruce could often be seen toasting peppermint snobs with his friends at noon on the patio at the Cove. Bye, Tweety, bye. The friends who help with this panel are Amy Aiken, Richard Scarborough, and Brian McDonald. I'm Scott Smith. Thank you for sharing our memories. 
Bruce Tweedy was our friend. Think of me, think of me fondly when we've said goodbye. Remember me once in a while. Please promise me you will try. Recall those days when you will find your love and take your heart back and be free. If you ever find a moment, spare a thought for me. Think of me, think of me waking, silent and resigned. Imagine me trying to hide. To put you from my mind Recall those days Look back on all those days Think of the things we'll never do There will never be a day When I won't think of you Marty Lott has been the most important person of my adult life. So many people I've loved have died of AIDS over the last decade, and I've worried about their souls. Were they ready? Were they at peace? Are they at rest? I no longer worry because they have their own special angel to protect them. I'm Carrie Cahill, and Marty Lott was my best friend. It's been a little more than three years since Doris Rowell said goodbye to her grandson Eric. He died when he was only five years old. She recalls his affection for his teddy bear, who went everywhere he did, his cravings for Brunswick stew and iced tea, and his unyielding love to play. He loved to show me things I don't think I would ever have seen myself, she told me. He was a happy child. I'm Jake Rothschild, and my staff at MOCA is assembling a quilt to honor the short but significant life of Eric Rowell. Although we never had the joy of hearing his laughter, it is our privilege to commemorate the very special life he lived. To her parents and family in Buffalo, New York, where she was born in 1929, she was known as Beverly Louise Neal. To her classmates and friends at Bernal Academy in Gainesville, Georgia during the 1940s, she was known as Barry Neal. But to many of us who welcomed her into our homes each week, she will always be the gutsy, red-haired saloon keeper at the Long Branch in Dodge City. This was the way I knew her. And while I couldn't call her friend, here is someone who could. You probably knew her as Miss Kitty. I knew her as Amanda. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of difference. They both had a zest for life and lived it fully. Amanda's passion was animals, and it was a, a great sadness for her to know that hundreds were becoming extinct daily. When I saw her at her home in Scottsdale, Arizona, I was not surprised to find that her three-acre backyard resembled Noah's Ark. The cheetah was on the endangered list, and she had over 20 in very expensive enclosures, to say nothing of the daily feed bill. But it mattered not to Amanda. They were God's creatures, and she was determined to save them. I'm Dennis Weaver, and Amanda Blake was my special friend. Sometimes it seemed if I just dreamed Somehow you would be here Wishing I could hear your voice again Knowing that I never would dream 
dreaming of you won't help me to do all that you dreamed I could. This is Richard Thorson, Jr. Richard's enduring legacy will be the amazing amount of friends he made and kept. That circle of friends is ever widening as some of Richard's friends who didn't know each other are now sitting next to each other tonight. But I must say, most appropriately, on this Mother's Day Eve, Richard's best friend is sitting beside me this evening, his mom. Richard was her champion. Whether it was volunteering to do the dishes, or taking mom out to eat. I'm his dad, and along with his grandparents, his brother, his relatives, his hundreds of loving friends, we miss him very much. Richard left us last month. On April 3rd, he was 29. September 1953, Jerry and her sister are walking down Broadway. Suddenly, labor pains heralded the arrival of baby Rennie. A new star is born. Later, Jerry moves Ronnie and brother Tony to Florida, where she meets Sam at Arthur Murray's ballroom. On to Buford, Georgia, where Lisa, Scott, and Lynn are born. Ronnie's down-to-earth good old boy sincerity set him off from the crowd. For him, show business was inevitable, and these photos capture his cast of friends. Ronnie is remembered by many. We miss his handsome face. We miss the loving man who saw us for what we are on the inside. Ronnie faced death with courage and bravery, but he didn't want to be forgotten. Don't worry, kid. Your spirit will be in this world forever. Thank you, Jerry, for the wonderful son you had. He brought happiness to many people. Too many years holding back tears why can't the past just die? Wishing you were somehow here again Knowing we must say goodbye Try to forgive, teach me to live Give me the strength to try No more memories Sad years. Help me say goodbye. Help us say goodbye. You gave the world new ways to dream. Somehow. 